In this video, we're going to create a GraphQL remote source inside our HiGraph project. A remote source will let your editors relate external API data with internal HiGraph data, giving you a singular API to query for your project. Let's start with a relatively simple model. I have a character model here that has a character's name, biography, and avatar. In this mm, geeky example, we're building a character for a tabletop role-playing game. So we'll also have a class string where we can set things like fighter or wizard or that sort of thing. This works to associate that string, but what if I wanted more data? Now I could create a model for classes and then manually add that information and then I could associate that, but that sounds like a lot of work. Instead, let's use an API to grab that information. In this example, we're going to use a lovely test GraphQL API that has information on Dungeons and Dragons. From spells to monsters and equipment to classes, there's plenty of great information to be had. To start, we're gonna head over to our schema page in the admin and add a new remote source. We'll give it a name and a prefix if we don't like what's auto-generated, and then we'll select a GraphQL type as our type. For this example, we'll skip over headers and we won't need a custom input type definition. Now, if you wanted to query this API on the fly with HiGraph's API, you can set a series of arguments that can be used for that query uh, inside of your API calls. From there, we need to give it a base URL. We'll grab that from our API documentation. We have the GraphQL URL right here. I'm gonna copy that and we'll put it in base URL. Now down below, we can see we have an introspection method. It's gonna be post for this one. And then we also have the introspection URL if it's different from the remote source URL. In our case, it's exactly the same. So we're good to click the add button in the top right. Now this makes us ready to use this as a remote source field. However, we'll need to associate this new data with the information in our content. To do that, we'll add a new field to our character model. We'll create a new GraphQL remote source field. Give this field a name that makes sense and an API ID to go with it. And then we can scroll down to the query section. Here's where we'll define which endpoint to use and pass any arguments we need to. As you can see, we have a decent amount of options, but we'll want the class for our current field. And you can see there's a string argument that is the index. And that's actually going to be the class name that we're entering into our character model. To pull in data dynamically, we're actually going to use handlebar syntax with a couple of uh, curly braces here. And we'll actually use the doc.class selector that auto-populates here. This will grab the data from that string field in our model. From here, we can go ahead and click add, and this will add the field to our content model. We'll head back over to content, and inside of content, we'll take a look at the only character we currently have. So we have a name and a character biography, and then down here we also have the avatar, which is just an asset, uh, and the class string that we had from before. I populated that with the, uh, the string fighter. And then down here we have the class information. The class information is where the data gets added for our new remote source. I can click the preview in playground and head on over to the API playground. Now let's grab a couple extra pieces of data. I think we might want the class name. Let's grab the index, uh, maybe the hit die that this class is going to use. And then we can also maybe expand out the, the information about each level the class can take. And maybe also from there, grab the features that come with it and we'll grab a description, uh, name and the level for each of those, as well as the overall level for each of these. Now when we hit the play button, you can see we have our name of the class, the index, the hit die, and all of those lovely features in our classes. All of this data is at our fingertips from an external API. There's no need to copy and paste into HiGraph or set up convoluted nested queries in our front end. Now, from here, you can take this first spin with your own GraphQL API or extend this example further by pulling additional data from this API, maybe a spell list or an equipment list. Now, when you're able to mix together your various APIs, you can create some really powerful solutions to your internal problems. Now, we're really excited about the possibilities of content federation, and we hope you take advantage of all the power this offers you.